It would be a very strange thing if one were more aware of a crew of four or five people and a camera or two than of the much more directing and commanding presence of 300 people, I mean, to whom one is also responding. It would be very strange if one displaced all the anxieties and problems of any conference onto just the, the technology. I think people do that. I think we have to get used to it for record and so on, and uh, I find I quite quickly forget it, which is probably the best way of using it. I don't know whether yeah. I'm no, It was easy to forget it, but as you noticed, at the end, it became a subject of the conference. Cameras in the hall. They are filming a, a documentary uh, on the conference. Relinquish the uh, podium. Can I have the TV cameras switched off while I make my comment? Yeah. yeah. Turn off the TV camera, please. I think it should become a, a subject because, well, now the new kind of intellectuals who are, who are uh, becoming has to integrate in their activities, in their social activities, those technical modalities. Uh, 20 years ago or 25 years ago, uh, I couldn't speak, really, I couldn't speak when a tape recorder was on the table. And now, I uh, don't even notice it. The, the, the only uh, analogy I would find between uh, Christian, the Christian uh, negative theology scene I was describing last night, and this one, is my suffering here. <laughs> So we were not disturbed by the presence of, of the camera, but um, finally we had to uh, reflect on, on the fact that today uh, an international conference had to be recorded, I mean the voices have to be recorded, and the spectacle have, has to be recorded, not only, not only for uh, further use or reproduction, but to become conscious of of this mm, technological necessity. I mean, it's, uh, we are speaking of, of writing. And I think that uh, film is a kind of writing. Is a, I mean, liter l l the linguistics of writing have to integrate the linguistics of uh, filming, uh, all sorts of recording. So uh, I think it, it not only, um, not, only uh, not, um, I mean, uh, uh, not an obstacle, not only not an obstacle, but but uh, a necessity today for today to have uh, to have conferences filmed. Yes. One could add that in any case, the conference has been taking place on so many different levels. We wrote papers, most of us, before we came, and we knew we in advance that these papers should be published. Would be published. We we then spoke them, <laughs> and there was other partly prepared, partly unprepared speech. Uh, the notion of recording and of filming, as you say, which will be a different kind of record because mm -hmm. a different medium and selection. Mm -hmm. I think this has mm -hmm. to be accepted. It does pr need learning. Yes, and we have to analyze the, the, the relationship between the locality of the conference. For instance, this one, which is organized by uh, academics in uh, the University of Strasbourg, depending on the, the program of literary linguistics and so on. <coughs> But it was organized um, also as uh, an international event with the, with the aim of publishing and uh, making this conference known elsewhere. So um, that was part of, of, the, of the planned structure. Mm -hmm. And it would be a really uh, regressive practice mm -hmm. to, to omit or to, to, uh, to um, do without those, those yes. technical apparatuses. Or even worse, to refuse them, because this yeah. would be uh, cutting oneself off from a situation which is increasingly important. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, because it's in a way part of the same problem, how you felt coming into an English-speaking conference, there was some reaction that it was in any case Eurocentric, but it was also English-speaking, which disguises the fact, of course, that uh, there were British and Americans here, which are uh, very different cultures. Because this whole problem of <clears throat> the movement of ideas, which we now say is very simple across frontiers, books get translated or we learn to read others' languages, um, 
it still seems to me that although it occurs favorably in many instances, this movement, a sort of import and export of ideas and writing, always takes place within certain social situations of which we have to become conscious. Um, I mean, you must know that uh, the work of yourself and your predecessors has been perceived not only as work, but as work emanating from Paris, which then, uh, in Britain, uh, already occurs within a set, and some of the more irrelevant reactions to it, mm -hmm. as well as possibly some relevant ones, <coughs> have identified that set of which, um, which isn't only one way, it's not just the special case of Paris, um, that we read in French of the Anglo-Saxon mind to which we are presumed to belong, mm -hmm. which even for someone like myself who's not an Anglo-Saxon can be seen as a problem because we realize we're already being read within a set of which we should become conscious, but uh, how valid that set is, how, how much it's been tested, that is a question. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a question of, I would say, translation in, in the two senses. Translation in the strict, strict linguistic sense. And from that point of view, I was attentive to the fact that um, the English-speaking community here was very diverse. I mean, and there were so many conflicts and differences within this community. Right. Not only between Americans and, and uh, English or, or Scottish uh, people, but among um, uh, English speakers th themselves, and the the problem of uh, sub languages, dialects, um, social dialects, was at the center of, of the conference. So there is the problem of translation in this strict sense, which already uh, brings with it with itself the the, the prob problems of uh, social groups, um, communities. Uh, in the academy, outside of the academy. And there is, as you just pointed out, the, the problem of translation in the broad sense, that is the reception of uh, another, not only national, but uh, another s style of thinking, which sometimes yeah. is not simply national. Uh, the reception um, of a style of thinking and writing on the same subject, so sometimes uh, people in the academy can't sp understand one another when they speak on the, on the same corpus, the same yeah. author. And we, it's very difficult to, to localize where the, the difficulty, the, 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 the opacity. It's not simply a matter of uh, language in the strict sense. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of uh, layers of assumptions yeah. which build uh, the tradition and implicit, the implicit evaluations, which are always at work in, in any discourse, in any, in any rhetoric. And I found this conference very uh, uh, rich and interesting from that point of view, uh, because uh, on, on the same, so-called same uh, topic, we had many misunderstandings, yeah. um, um, because simply the uh, the, the, the implicit um, traditional um, assumptions were not exhibited, were just kept um, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the background. On so many layers, between cultures, between disciplines, between tendencies in yeah. disciplines. Um, and ways of teaching, to the, the, ways, problem, the pedagogical of, problem was right. uh, another uh, central Well, the one that I noticed particularly, we, we had twice a hesitation which was perhaps masking a disagreement about as central a word as natural or nature. Mm -hmm. Immediately we say the nature of language, that sense is affected by a quite alternative line of development by which from nature becoming a singular absolute you got a whole range of descriptions of the world which include, one, nature is all that which is not. I mean, immensely complex word, but being approached from different traditions. This now not a matter of language, I think, primarily, but of different intellectual traditions, mm -hmm. uh, scientific and uh, versions, alternative versions of the literary tradition, 
and an unease about using this word, which uh, is there before you get to what can properly be called the theoretical argument. As uh, a historian of meanings, I, I find it very curious when one is in the intricacies of theory that we should trip over so simple a historical uh, tangle. Sometimes people were impatient that one wasn't getting through to what were called the fundamental issues, but some of the fundamental issues were the process mm -hmm. of getting through. I mean, I don't know whether you'd agree with that, but... Yes, sometimes it's, it's a difference in, in emphasis. I mean, the, yeah. same, the same sentence, which l sounds intelligible, uh, it's not, is not intelligible because uh, one is, uh, is, putting, is putting the, the emphasis on, on a certain word or a certain value of the word and another one uh, on, the, on another. Yes, uh, the, 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 the frames of reference and allusion which one doesn't even realize one's taking for, for granted. Mm -hmm. The other thing, I mean, is simply this factor of selection in what one knows if one has made the effort of another discipline or another writer or another tendency. Because, again, in this matter of movement between cultures, there's a very complex process of selection. I mean, take something as apparently natural as how books are selected for translation. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole history of Russian formalism and its successors could be written not only in terms of a movement of intellectual ideas of great importance, but in what look at first sight like accidents of translation at particular date or of failures to translate, of the order in which these things appeared, so that earlier stages of the argument appeared before the later stages. Mm -hmm. And this whole question, if we are talking about international exchange, I think we have to become very much more conscious of those processes which in a way are the material that we're studying. And this is my point in quoting it. As a challenge to certain tendencies in applied linguistics and to forms of literary analysis seemingly derived from them, which have appropriated a selective version of modernism, and within this an internal and self-proving definition of the avant-garde, as a way of ratifying their own much narrower positions and procedures. What happened was that a different generation of um, graduate students, young teachers and so on, began reading these works in the original language. They created a market for them. They were then published without reference to the academy. The academy then saw this as a subversive movement to undermine its own authority. And on the other hand, they could sometimes often say that a mere fashion was started by a particular press yes. publicizing a certain tendency, and this was just, but it would have been more acceptable if there hadn't been that kind of lag and blockage and exercise of power in the first place. And on that one, I would just say a word as, as a, a Frenchman speaking uh, <laughs> uh, English with uh, much difficulty, uh, a word on the power and the authority not only of the English language, yeah. uh, but on the, of the American uh, yes. culture and market on, on, from the point of view. For instance, uh, I was, I think, the, the only French here, but I had to speak English, of course, because the English was the dominant language. Uh, uh, could I speak French? Uh, we charge the constructionism with being irrationalist. But I had the feeling that I was invited here to the extent that the United States have legitimized uh, yeah. my work. Yeah. So everything, every legitimation has to go through uh, the United States, to, to the American Academy. Yeah. And this, is, this confirms the authority, the author, the authority of the English language all over the world, I mean, in scientific yes. and um, in scholarship in general, and the authority of the uh, North American uh, uh, market and, and uh, academic power. And of course, this could be, or has been, implicitly at least, uh, a topic uh, in our conference. I think it was there, and it was a tension. It's often difficult to express because British and American academics tend to meet quite often, to know each other well, they're friendly and polite, but between the cultures there's this tension, and it's not only a matter of the language, I mean, yeah. it 
probably a more extreme case, but there is an area now of a legitimation by North American culture of mm -hmm. the British culture at every level, including the commercial, very obviously. And uh, what happens then is the process of internal adjustment. I know people in this culture who are no longer oriented towards this culture or t towards Europe, but towards what is likely to be legitimated. I, mm -hmm. Often, fortunately, they get it wrong, mm -hmm. but likely to be legitimated in North American culture. Mm -hmm. now. This is not the neutral process of no. recognition by one's peers. Nothing is neutral in this, in this uh, <laughs> right. field. Uh, I had the feeling to it that, uh, from this point of view, that the tension between s a part of the uh, English intelligentsia and a part of the, the American intelligentsia, th this tension was stronger than between a part of the, of the American Academy and a part of the French Academy. The dialogue or the, the translation, let, let's use this word in a broad sense, the translation between French uh, in intellectual life and American intellectual life is easier than between American and English intellectual life and, of course, French and English. French and, and partly, the worst is between French and English. Partly uh, because uh, a very important a continental European emigration went to the United States, which made the familiarity with those traditions more acceptable. In those ways, the English reaction was merely, this is probably one, was merely one provincial. Um, on the other hand, uh, one hears denunciations, not always frivolous here, of uh, a kind of Franco-American intellectual hegemony, which uh, is precisely um, seen in this process we were really describing. It's not like that. But when this interacts, as it does, with all sorts of political tensions, cultural tensions, and so on, it's mm -hmm. the, the, the only thing is, is, is the recognition and a very frank examination of it because mm -hmm. it is very complex. Mm -hmm.